there is no need to uh, um, establish the presence of a quorum and we can proceed as necessary. Now may I call on Attorney Dana Alberto, our Legislative Committee Secretary, to acknowledge the presence of our various resource persons. Yes, Attorney Alberto, please. Good afternoon. The Committee on Foreign Relations would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, namely, from Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Acting Director Charles Ching and Principal Assistant Diane Bartolome, and virtually present is Attorney Robel Garcia. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Attorney Laika Tolentino, OYC Section Chief Consorcio C. Olivan, and Attorney Giselle Marie B. Galvez. From Board of Investments, we have Attorney Ryan P. Perez. From Department of Finance, we have Director Emmy I. Macabales. From Department of Justice, we have Chief State Counsel Dennis Arvin L. Chan and State Counsel Maria Loreen D. Suwan. And from Filipino Association in Brunei, virtually present is Mr. Clifford Baluarte. That would be all, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, last February 27, the agreement between the government of the Philippines and the government of His Majesty Sultan uh, Bunay Darussalam for the avoidance of double taxation and the prevention of uh, fiscal evasion with respect to taxes on income was referred to the committee, hence the public hearing today. May I request the resource persons to use our time wisely and to comment on matters only that pertain to the topic at hand. Let us observe proper decorum at all times, including refraining from making any derogatory remarks against resource persons. An agreement was entered into, as stated earlier, and the um, committee notes herewith that uh, similar treaties have been entered into by the Philippines with a minimum of at least 48 countries, last count. Oftentimes, taxpayers involved in cross-border transactions are subjected to tax on the same income by different taxing authorities. And as a result, not only are taxpayers unduly burdened by executive uh, taxes, the effects of government investment incentives are also blunted. To remedy this situation, there should be improved transparency and cooperation between tax authorities and states. The ratification of avoidance of taxation agreements are concurred by the Senate because they promote international trade and investment, primarily allocating taxing jurisdiction between the contracting states to eliminate or mitigate double taxation on income and also enforce domestic laws to reduce tax evasion. Let us hear from the resource persons to aid this committee better understand the pros and cons of the agreement subject of this public hearing. And with that, um, I'd like to call on straight away our um, our resource persons, firstly from the DOF and the BIR, if they would like to uh, uh, make opening statements and explain what we have at hand. Is there anyone who would like to um, represent the DOF. I think uh, Secretary Jokno has already submitted a position yeah. paper. Can uh, You can perhaps, Director Makabales, um, provide us and put on record the salient points in summary. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Also on the part of the Department of Finance, we have already expressed our concurrence to the to the to the signing of the, the of the DTA with the state of Brunei, and mainly because uh, the the DTA will allow for the affirmation of our commitments with the ASEAN country, especially on the um, forum of taxation. So this will also complement our existing agreements with other ASEAN countries. To date, there are five, and so we hope to add the the DTA with Brunei to that. Yes, the chair recognizes the presence of Sherwin uh, Gachalian, our senator and uh, the chairman of Ways and Means. This being a uh, treaty with regard to double taxation, uh, I'm certain that uh, your uh, expertise will be very valuable. So you were saying, as I said earlier, that this will merely strengthen the... Uh, 
already uh, clear-cut guidelines for ASEAN countries and the um, ability to uh, uh, avoid double taxation and even mitigate uh, tax evasion. So that's the position of the DOF. Are there any amendments that are uh, requested or any clarifications? To date, ma'am, there are no additional clarification or amendments proposed by the Department of Finance. The agreement itself was originally negotiated as early as 2001 and revisited in 2010. Um, as of 2017, um, the Bureau of Internal Revenue has expressed their agreements to the last provisions that was still um, unclear at the time. And um, that that clarification done through the exchange of notes between the the state of Brunei and the Philippines has already been confirmed. Yes, thank you. I uh, just needed the clarification on that. And uh, um, does the BIR uh, wish to add to the presentation or uh, the statement uh, of the Department of Finance? Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, we concur with their representation, ma'am. So we do not have anything to add. Any we, I sorry. Um, we do not have anything more to add because we agree with the statements of the DOF. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Senator Wynne, if at any time uh, you would like to add anything, please uh, simply let us know. So, okay, this is uh, between the uh, um, Sultanate of Brunei and uh, the Philippines. And uh, perhaps there are just a few questions we'd like to pose to our uh, various uh, authorities here from the DFA, the DOJ, and uh, even uh, the BOI. Um, unang una, meron tayo nabanggit sa, sa statements ng DOF from the time of Secretary uh, Dominguez hanggang sa position paper submitted by Secretary Jokno that the DTA is expected to create more jobs in the atmosphere of transferring technology and skills between the two countries. So do we have data on the total number of Filipino workers who will benefit from this tax treaty? Ilan ba talaga yung Pilipino na sa Brunei? Ilan naman yung uh, Brunei citizens na narito sa Pilipinas kung sakali? May idea po kayo. Baka yung DFA makatulong. Saan ang Pilipino sa Brunei? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, Ma'am, for our latest info, we have 20,100 20, Filipinos in OFWs in Brunei. The gender-wise is almost split 50-50. Um, around 10,400 males and 9,700 females. But we don't have the data on the Brit uh, Brunei citizens in the Philippines. Okay, I doubt that there could be very many, being that there are very few Brunei citizens, even in Brunei. Pero itatanong ko lang sana, may idea kayo yung uh, mga Pilipino sa Brunei, ano ang trabaho? Ma'am, the data I gave po, uh, for the uh, classification po, they were classified as mostly uh, professionals. Professionals. Yes, Pati yung mga kababaihan, kasi dati maraming DH din. Uh, Ma'am, as per late data po, domestic helpers account for 1,700. Oh, that's great. So our uh, our um, breakdown has actually changed uh, for the better and been professionalized. Maganda naman balita yun. So yung uh, transfer of technology na nabanggit and skills, uh, what are we pertaining to kaya dun sa technology and skills? I remember um, ages ago when the palace was being built in Brunei by Filipino contractors, Filipino architects and engineers, the transfer of technology was from the Philippines to Brunei. Are you saying that petrol technology will uh, be obtained by the Philippines as, as a result of this treaty? Madam Chair, um, admittedly, po, uh, the, I actually just assumed the office 12 hours ago. So I have to go to the details of that. But as per now, Paul, uh, data shows that the slant is towards Brunei. We import thanks to the oil products that we import from them. Po. Oh, lumalaki ang ating negative trade balance sa kanila, hindi ba? Pabaliktad. Dung dati, sila ang uh, bumibili sa atin. Pero ngayon, sa uh, pangangailangan natin sa langis at uh, sa iba't iba pang mga produkto ng langis, eh talagang uh, lumulobo na yung uh, binibili natin sa kanila, no? Okay. Um, anyway, I'm uh, curious as to the kind of technology 
topology and scales, the other benefits that uh, we could derive from the DTA. Any idea? The statement, after all, was actually derived from the DOF. Baka dapat ang DOF ang sumagot, ano? Sila kasi nag-announce eh. Ma'am, on the specifics of the trade, uh, on the specific of the technology and skill transfer, um, I think this would relate more on um, investments made by, for example, Brunei companies here in the Philippines, made by presumably companies based in Brunei who would invest in the Philippines. But as the data specific to um, so uh, the statement was on the inbound transfer of technology and skills to the Philippines. So presumably this would refer to. Is, Sorry, I'm really having trouble hearing you. Uh, Ma'am, um, the, the statement made, I think, by the Department of Finance is in relation to the inbound transfer of technology and skills. So presumably this would refer to um, Brunei companies who would invest in the Philippines and the potential of the technology transferred by such companies here in the Philippines. Um, but, but I would also defer to the Board of Yes, ma'am, on the specifics on this matter. Maybe the BOI, Attorney Perez, can help us on this uh, score. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, ma'am, in regards to investment, uh, from the time uh, the double tax treaty became effective between Philippines and Brunei, uh, we have not realized um, any investment as... With the BUI, there's no investment yet. Oh, but parang wala pa ako naririnig na Brunei company na narito sa Pilipinas. However, considering other IPAs, investment promotion agencies, there's a minimal uh, investment if I can uh, provide the data. Uh, it's on uh, professional, scientific, and technical activities. Yeah. Uh, on the particular spot, I don't have the information. Uh, if you want uh, a more yes. granular information I can uh, request from the other okay. IPAs. Because when this goes on the floor, we'll have to be very clear cut on what advantages this brings. So, to our uh, knowledge, there's no Brunei company as yet operating in the Philippines. Uh, as far as BOI is concerned, we don't have any uh, well, investment. Kind of listing, but you said, as uh, you mentioned earlier, you'll provide us with uh, a list of a few professional and scientific efforts that have ensued in the past. Uh, based on uh, the information that we have gathered from other IPAs, uh, we can request the information, ma'am, if uh, what particular investment and to which IPA uh, this was uh, made. Okay, thank you. There's also mention, and I think this is very interesting, of uh, cooperation between the Philippines and Brunei in the halal sector considering that there's an existing memo of understanding to explore opportunities. And since we know fully well that uh, halal products here in the Philippines are inordinately expensive, sometimes triple or quadruple the price of regular food. So is there any input on the part, part of BOI, any interest manifested by uh, some of the Brunei companies? Yung halal maganda po yun eh, dahil uh, talaga minsan halos sinasamantala na talaga ang ating mga kapatid na Muslim at labis-labis ang presyo ng halal products? Um, yeah, so um, the halal generally, including uh, tourism and uh, the agri-sector, we are aggressively promoting this and in fact um, uh, in the past uh, few years, going back, uh, there's already uh, an improvement in the uh, in our trade, uh, like what the um, uh, DFA mentioned, there's a significant increase in our uh, export versus import. While it is true that there's still a trade imbalance and deficit, because uh, import is significantly more than our export. Um, if if uh, all the investment promotion agencies, including DTI, will aggressively promote uh, certain industries and sectors, and uh, perhaps we can um, uh, improve improve on our exports on uh, certain uh, commodities. 
Thank yes, you. I'm given to understand that we're already exporting uh, butter, fruit juice, and prepared meat, which presumably are halal certified. We're all fully aware that uh, Brunei certification for halal is actually recognized throughout the world. And uh, the potential for halal products is enormous, even in ASEAN alone, given the size of the populations of uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, the rest. So, sana mabigyan ng din ang BOI and and uh, if you had further data, that would also help uh, push forth this uh, this uh, um, effort to pass the uh, uh, double taxation uh, law. Uh, Yung Muslim travel market has been a very wealthy and loyal one over the decades. Bago mag-COVID, nakita natin ang uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore na kinabang ng todo-todo sa Muslim travel market sa mga turista nang gagaling sa Middle East at Africa at iba pang lugar. So, paano ito makakatulong sa Pilipinas na maakit itong mga uh, Arabo, Muslim at uh, iba pang dayuhan pumunta dito sa Pilipinas. Yes, I think there are approximately 145 million Muslim tourists from ASEAN and the Middle East uh, who could potentially come to the Philippines. One of the pitches of the DOF is that this would be uh, expanded uh, here in the Philippines. Tama ba yun? Maenganyo sila pumunta dito pag ma-reduce yung income tax ng mga travel agencies and other operators. Tama po ba yun? Uh, on, the, on the DTA, ma'am, what it covers is the income, the personal income, corporate income tax of um, entities here in the Philippines. So if we are talking about them establishing companies here from then we expect that they will benefit from the DTA. Yes, presumably it will be more attractive if uh, the double taxation uh, fear uh, can be assuaged. No, So that's another reason why we'd like this uh, to to go no quickly. Tapos may parating tinatanong, uh, I'm sure expert na si Senator Gatchalian, ang uh, laging issue sa DOF, is there going to be anything in terms of impact on foregone tax revenues for our country? Parating naman yan ang uh, issue ng DOF, foregone revenue. May foregone revenue bang na-anticipate dito? On the foregone revenue, ma'am, I will defer to the Bureau of Internal Revenue on the statement. Oh, sige. BIR na lang daw. Are there any fears that there will be an uh, impact on uh, revenue and uh, that a significant amount will be foregone from the 20,000 plus Filipinos already living in Brunei? As of this moment, ma'am, we cannot answer the revenue for gone because there are no um, tax treaty application yet because the Brunei treaty is not yet effective. But in the future, we may gain information on the said revenue for gone. Daya ninyo, ha? Ang DOF at BIR, parating tinatanong sa mga mambabatas, magkano yung for gone revenue? Pag kami nagtanong, hindi kayo sumasagot, ha? Daya ninyo, ha? Thank you, ma'am. Kayo talaga. Okay, Article 23A says that tax payable in Brunei shall be allowed as a credit on any tax payable in the United in the Philippines. Meanwhile, 23B indicates that Philippine tax paid under the laws of our country shall be allowed uh, reversely as credit against any Brunei tax. Tama ba yun? Yun ang pagkaintindi ko. Ayan, tumatango yung BIR. So sana tama naman. Does this mean that under the treaty, it's not necessary to actually pay the Brunei taxes first before we can ask for tax credits in the Philippines? The fear is that this is prone to tax fraud, right? Because uh, in the first place, um, we are not certain that the tax was paid in the other country. How do we ascertain that there was, in fact, tax paid in Brunei, for example. Hence, they are exempt from taxes here in the Philippines. How do we safeguard the evasion of tax entirely? Uh, okay, okay, uh, under the Under the treaty, which is actually in accordance with the tax code, 
uh, the Philippine or the BIR can grant a tax credit for foreign taxes, foreign income taxes paid in the other country. For example, if you are deriving income, if you are a Filipino or a Philippine corporation deriving income in Brunei, and if it so happens that you are taxed in that, uh, with respect to that income in Brunei, then you can claim as a tax credit the taxes withheld in, in Brunei. So, and it's also the other way around. If, uh, Pero iniintindi ko lang yung sequence. Kailangan ba uh, magbayad muna ng Brunei taxes para ipakita sa Pilipinas, o oh, bayad na ako sa Brunei? Or hindi na kailangan magbayad muna sa Brunei? Magsasabi ka lang. Usually, Kasi hindi klaro sa batas eh. Usually under the treaty or under the tax code, we we often require a, a certificate of uh, withholding tax from the other tax from authority. the other tax authority uh -oh. before we can give a tax credit. Tama. And it must be an income tax that okay. is levied. So, but the term utilized in the treaty is tax payable. They're not using the term tax already paid or certified as paid or uh, verified by the other taxing authority. Ang sabi lang, tax payable. Kaya medyo kinakabahan ako sa 23A. But but in the case of the Philippines, and if it, we always align the interpretation of the article and elimination of double tax, taxation with the provision uh, under the tax code, uh, that is on the allowance as tax credit. So, we sh so the process is when you're applying for a tax credit, you always present the certificate of uh, withholding tax. Di ba dapat paltan to sa tax paid para maliwanag? Kasi it opens us up to fraud eh, and complete evasion, di ba? Kasi malay naman natin kung talagang bayad dun sa kabila. Ang nasa batas kasi, tax payable. Dapat sana tax already. Di paid, hindi ba? Para maliwanag. It, it's not a trick question. Ah. It's uh, simple lang. Um, Simple, simple understanding of uh, tax payable, it's not necessarily paid yet, eh, di ba? Andyan eh, oh. Oo. Here, uh, that's right. It's Article 23, 1A. In the case of the Republic of the Philippines subject to the laws of the Philippines, which is what you're saying, subject to the laws of the Philippines, the credit of taxes paid outside the Republic of the Philippines, tax payable in Brunei, Dar es Salaam, in respect to income or profits, etc. So the term is it need not be paid first, kasi tax payable. Yun lang ang worry ko. Nakita po niyo Article Twenty Three One A. Maybe you can uh, clarify yeah. that to us also. Not necessarily here, but perhaps in writing, yeah. because uh, this seems to be open ground for fraud. Uh, I, I I disagree with that, ma'am. Uh, actually, this is the general wordings that we adopt in all our in most of our treaties. Uh, the, the mechanism of ordinary credit method is 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 uh, is, uh, is is espoused here because uh, when you say tax payable, that means that you have a tax obligation to the Philippines because you are a resident of the Philippines, and at the same time. You have a tax obligation in the other country because that is where you derive your income. So the tax payable phrase here uh, is that you are you you have you really you really have to pay the tax that is due on the income that you der this derive from the other countries. I hey, think. Na googlean lang ako kasi hindi pantay. Yung sa Pilipinas kikilalanin natin yung payable sa Brunei. But look at. Section 23.1b, here it's very clear, Philippine tax paid, paid na yan, ha? under the laws of the Philippines, line 4, and in accordance with this agreement, ayun, tax paid siya, pat ganun? 
So it's not necessarily uh, it's not necessary to pay the Brunei taxes first, but it's necessary to pay the Philippine taxes first. But hindi pantay. 23 million. Ma'am, ma- ma- uh, yung 20, uh, 23B po, that, that per... Sa Brunei yan eh. Binabawas naman yung foreign taxes. Uh, uh, hindi, pero yung 23B sa ano yung Brunei? Yung 23-1 A and B. Okay. Di kasi sila magkapareho. Mag, uh, we, we expect that kasi po sa uh, yung 23A po, that is that pertains to how the Philippines will grant the corresponding tax credit. Whereas dun sa 23B po, yun po naman yung that's how Brunei will 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 operate or will... Yun na nga, yun na nga. Uh, Mr. Olivan, bakit ganun? Mas strict to sila sa Brunei, pero tayo dito sa Pilipinas, pwede tayong lusutan. Hindi naman po yung lulu. Hindi, kasi sila, magre-require sila ng certification na bayad dito sa Pilipinas. Tayo, basta sabihin na bayad na dun sa Brunei, hindi naman natin alam kung totoo hindi. Okay lang, tatanggapin natin na sa tax credit. Ba't ganun? Ma'am, uh, bali po sa treaty kasi, yun na, sige po, ba, 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 ba re-revisit po namin kasi nag-revisit po kami ng treaty model. <laughs> so, uh, Uh, for the longest time, ito na po yung uh, ginagamit naming provision. Yeah, but, but for the longest time, hindi pantay. Lugi, Pilipinas niya. Hindi naman po, ma'am. Uh, kasi po, yung sa yung the other country, we, we we defer to them kung ano yung wording nila. Because... Maybe it's time we stop deferring to them. Dapat pantay-pantay. <laughs> Di ba? No. Lahat ng foreign relations are governed by mutuality yeah. and reciprocity. Yeah, ma'am. Eh, hindi naman yata ito equal. Hindi po naman ma'am. Uh, bali po kasi sa yung tax credit mechanism ng bawat country o yung elimination of double taxation procedures nila, it always depends dun po sa domestic law rin po nila. May mga treaty po tayo la, na medyo mas complicated yung uh, domestic procedures pagdating sa pag-eliminate pag, uh, ng double taxation. Eh, pero papahirapan pa natin sa sarili natin. Ma'am, we can... Sila madali lang. Ma'am, uh, we cannot... uh, kailangan na i-certify na paid. Tayo, uh, magkakalkal pa tayo ng batas, magbabago pa tayo ng guidelines, ba tayo nagpapahirap ng sarili? Yun lang tanong ko. Dapat pantay, dapat patas. Thank you, Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, po. Um, normally po kasi when you compute for the income tax due, you will deduct naman po yung foreign taxes paid. And it can be deducted either as a income tax payable mo or as expenses. And for that po, yes po, for that naman po, the Bureau will request documents or proof bago po, nila, bago po sila payagan na i-deduct. Nevertheless, nevertheless uh, the burden of proof uh, looks, it looks much higher for us Filipinos than it is for Brunei uh, residents, di ba? Dapat ayusin natin. Total, sabi ninyo, inaayos naman ninyo yung terminology. Palibhasang matagal na to, hindi naman ibig sabihin na hindi pwede nang baguhin, di ba? Para maliwanag, napatas naman, di ba? Proforma yata. Oo nga, proforma, sabi nga nila. Eh, pero ginagaya-gaya natin, mali. <laughs> Kung sineserox natin, at least itama na. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Section 24.1 of the treaty provides that nationals of a contracting state shall not be subjected in the contracting state to any taxation or any requirement which is more burdensome than taxation to which nationals of that other contracting state are subjected. Does this mean that we have to impose a tax rate for Filipinos and nationals of Brunei? Parang yung 24-1, parang ganun din eh. Mambali po tong uh, article on non-discrimination. It only uh, promotes the idea that uh, you cannot discriminate based on nationality. So for example, uh, under we, we always defer to, that, to our tax code. For example, uh, if there is a particular, uh, if you are taxing Uh, non-Filipinos higher than uh, Filipinos, then that's uh, that may be a a a, a uh, sign of uh, discrimination, and we uh, usually it, it, it. So what you're saying is that we're in, it, we have to impose uniform tax rates on Filipinos and Brunei citizens. Uh, yes. Eh, para paano kung ayon lang tanggapin? 
it's this is not an easy uh, easy provision because uh, ayun na it, nga eh. it will, kasi na, parang pipilitin mo na uniform <laughs> pwede ba yun that's what it says eh ma- ma- but in reality po naman uh, nationals of other countries are more favorably taxed because they are only taxed on their uh, income within whereas if you are a national and you are you are residing in the Philippines then you are taxed worldwide so the question of discrimination is all is already set aside because that's the principles of taxation under the tax code so i don't it depends which jurisdiction uh, there are many jurisdictions that now impose worldwide taxation it's not only the philippines but, uh, i'm 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 glad to say that in the case of the philippines we have this will not become a, a discrimination issue because it's it's already in the tax code that we only tax nationals and foreign corporations on their uh, income within the philippines yes we understand it's income within the philippines yeah. in any case but uh, there may be preferential rates for filipinos or vice versa for foreign investors is that likely uh, given uh, our push for investments and the provision of incentives well if that is the if that particular tax incentive is given under a special law then anyone or any country for that or any corporation whether it's a national or a foreigner may also must must avail uh, in order to observe this non discrimination approbation thank you yes I would appreciate for both uh, the question earlier uh, about the tax payable uh, provision as well as this provision, if you could just provide us a very short uh, explanation of the same so that we have it on record because I'm certain that our colleague, Senator Gachalian, will query the same and we should have answers at hand. Okay, the other thing is, nabasa ko na nag-umpisa yung negotiation nito ng 2001 tapos na-resume ng 2010 tapos na-approve ng 2017 at napirmahan lamang ng 2021 ang tanong bakit 20 years para ma-negotiate yung DTA but ganun ka bagal may opposition ba o problem during the negotiation stage may issue ba that arose uh, normally po kasi ma'am, for, uh, neg- uh, for treaty negotiation, it usually takes uh, two to three rounds po. Actually, Bruna is very, uh, maikli na nga po siya kasi in second round lang. After the second round, the exchange maikli po... Maikli na yung 20 years, samantalang 43 years na halos sales copy lang naman to. Hindi rin lang na eh. eh. 43 na, 43 na double taxation treaties na ang napirmahan natin. Baka 20 years pa to. Um... From base po sa records namin is after the second round po in 2010, marami pa pong nangyaring back and forth correspondence between the Philippines and Brunei as to po yung mga provisions na uh, naging issue or hindi pa po nila napag-agree on the second round. Akala ko halos uh, pare-pareho na maitsura ng DTA. Um, um, there will be always issue po since there are two different tax laws. So we have to reconcile po the tax law of the Philippines and the tax law of Brunei. <laughs> Kaya tinatamad na sila pumirma at uh, beneficyo sa Pilipino hindi kabaliktaran, ano? There's no motivation to speed up the process whatsoever. Sige, tatanong ko na lang. Nakita ko may memo ang BIR, yung number 14, 2021, dated uh, 31 March 2021 with regards to streamlining. Ito yung bongga ninyong memo na talagang parating tinitignan ng lahat kasi inaasahan natin na may streamlining of procedures and documents for the availment of treaty benefits. Okay. So, andito nga, nakalista, that BIR is constrained by the following. Ayan na. So, one, volume of backlogs for the ease of doing business. Number two, limited number of personnel. Uh, responsible for evaluating and processing TTRAs. Number three, the 
process of confirming treaty benefits via the issuance of a BIR ruling entailing a thorough study and evaluation of the facts involved vis-a-vis -vis the applicable provisions of the tax treaty, national internal revenue code, as amended and existing jurisprudence. So, eto na yung implementation ng treaty. E mukhang ang haba-haba ng proseso at ng delay. So, how many backlogs ba talaga are we referring to? At bakit nagkaka-backlog, nakatakot-takot, na mismo yung memorandum ng BIR inaamin na santambak ang backlog? Ma'am, kasi po previously po nung mga bago po yung RMO na yan, ruling po talaga yung pag, ang issue po ng granting the benefit of exemption or preferential date. Rate. So, mahaba po talaga yung process from, kunwari, International Tax Affairs Division to another office, then hanggang kay commissioner po yung magsasign. Kaya po mahaba po talaga yung process. Ruling, yung RMO po, um, sinimplify na po siya, streamline, so certificate na lang po yung granting the benefits. So, um, hanggang assist, uh, commissioner na lang po ng legal service. So, parang two divisions na lang po siya. Dati? Dati po. Hanggang commissioner? Apat, apat po. Apat plus apat. commissioner pa. Apo. Ay, kasama na po yung commissioner. Ay, kasali apat. na yun. Apo. Pero Ayun, kulit, dalawa na lang. Apo, dalawa na. Okay. Pag granting po, pag denial, commissioner pa rin po. Eh, yung dati po, ma'am, um, yung ruling po talagang ilang pages pa po siya. Ngayon po, usually. Um, eh, kasi madalas dinadaing to eh. Apo. Ng ating OFW, dinadaing okay. ng mga Filipinos abroad na, okay, may treaty nga. Pero ang ending sa implementasyon, pagkahirap-hirap, chinuchubibo daw sila ng BIR, pabalik-balik, wala raw nangyayari. Ang Totoo ba yun? At bakit nagkaka-backlog? O na-simplify na yung proseso? Nabawasan na ba yung backlog? Ako, yes, ma'am. Mga more than 2,000 something na lang po yung ano. Eh, dati po mga, mas marami pa po talaga. Kasi yung previous din po, um, naipon po siya. Teka, more than 2,000 ang natitirang backlog pa rin. Apa. Pero, oh, malaki tuloy, pa yun, opo, pero mas, ma, mas malaki pa po kasi siya dati talaga. Kaya malaking bagay po na yung RMO, yung issuance po namin, naging certificate na lang po. Tapos yung isa rin pong nabanggit yung problem is yung limited number of uh, personnel. Yung personnel, oo, nasa, nasa sistema rin. Opo. At saka, meron rin binabanggit na yung proseso mismo of confirming treaty benefits Ayun nga po, through yun. a BIR ruling pa. Ganun pa rin po. ba hanggang ngayon? Po, Kada isa may BIR ruling? Hindi na po. Certificate na lang kayo. Kahirap naman kayo ng sarili niya. Yun dati po yun, yung ruling talaga na... Ilang Asa wala na yung ganun, yung pang Pag-denial pang lang po. Pang denial ruling. Pero pag ngayon pong um, certificate lang po, mga two pages na lang. Tapos may template naman po, so mas madali na po siyang gawin. Pero 2,000 pa rin ang pending. Dapat isimplify, ano, Senator Gatchelian? Kasi, kasi dapat i-simplify yung procedure, dami-dami nating OF. Ah, simplified na po siya kasi lang po yung dati ko si previous na backlogs, parang napunta po dun sa na-add nang na-add. So hanggang ngayon po, parang yung mga old po, ginagawa Wala pa rin. discount? Pa. <laughs> Bakit kami pinapenalize ng BIR pag late? Dapat pag kayo ang late, may discount. <laughs> Pwede ba? Pwede kong masabihin sa OFW yung ganun? Baka lalo pong mabawasan yung tako mo sa, sa BIR. Ayun po. Tapos hindi lang po kasi yung tax treaty application yung pinaprocess po namin. May mga iba-iba pong sections na eh, iba rin po. Minsan ano din po rush o kaya po urgent. So ano po, madami po talaga. Opo. Oh, so nadagdagan na ba yung personnel ninyo? Kasi parati kayong kulang ng tao. Nadag eh padami ng padami itong mga treaty obligations, itong OFW. Padami ng padami ang mga foreigners and Filipinos traveling and working overseas. So nadagdagan na ba kayo? Nadadagdagan po pero nababawasan din po. Ano? Nadadagdagan po pero nababawasan din po. Anong klase yun? Akala ko komilek lang ang dagdag bawas. <laughs> Hindi, kasi talagang laging dinadaing. Pero marami naman nag apply Lahat ng nagpaparecommend dito sa atin, di ba, Senator Win eh puro gusto BIR, customs. <laughs> o di parang there's no lack naman of applicants. 
Uh, yun ma'am po. Uh, based din po kasi as a case officer din po ako na nagpo-process. Uh, may factor din kasi ma'am that the documents will be coming abroad po. So, dapat apostilled or consularized. And since we're grieving uh, preferential rates, we have to check po talaga the documents if they're entitled. Kasi since we're giving preferential rates, it's also tax for gun in the Philippines. Kaya po we have to be sure that they are entitled to the treaty benefits before po we grant. Example, kung ora mismo sa araw na ito na concur ang Senate sa treaty, ganong katagal bago ma-implement ng BIR to? Sa Brunei lang ha, 20,000 lang ang Pilipino. Kailan ito ma-activate? Um, based ma'am, nasa treaty din po siya na upon ratification po, January 1, uh, after the year po na ma-ratify. So if it will be ratified this year, it will be in effect, po, effect uh, January 1, 2024. Oh, so December na namin itatakal to. <laughs> Naasar lang kita. <laughs> ma'am, uh, I, I, I will uh -oh. just add, ba bali po ano, <laughs> after ma-ratify siya po, ang uh, next step would be the Department of Foreign Affairs informing the um, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Brunei that the treaty has been ratified. And Sorry, who informs who? The DFA Manila yes. will inform the Ministry of in Foreign Brunei. Affairs. Yeah. So that's the only time when the, the, when the treaty will enter into force. And usually, the year in which, for example, if the treaty happens to enter into force this year, then the effectivity will be on beginning January 1 of the ne of next year. So, so that's the timeline for this. Okay, so it's still effective almost immediately, in fact. Yes. Uh, upon uh, notification of both sides, yes. naturally. Okay. Are there uh, other questions, Senator uh, Gachalian, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I just have basic questions lang just to enrich the record so that uh, when we uh, tackle this on the floor, uh, we'll have um, some of the basic questions answered. Uh, I'll keep it simple, Madam Chair. Uh, I understand that we have 20,000 OFWs in residing and working in Brunei. You know? uh, how can this treaty uh, benefit those 20,000 OFWs residing in Brunei? Basic question lang to. No? Sir, uh, with respect to Philippines, Filipinos working in Brunei, I think in Article... Uh, article... Cheers. Okay, sorry. Cheers. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Article 21 of the treaty says that uh, teachers, uh, individual who... Generally, teachers working in Brunei are exempt there for a period of four years. Usually, we only give exemption for two years, but uh, I think it's based on the generosity of our Brunei counterpart. They give a uh, a uh, a longer period of uh, exemption, which is four years. That's 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 very low. Sir. So, so professors, teachers, and researchers working in Brunei, Filipino working yes. in Brunei, they're exempted for four years. Yes. So, uh, in, in so far as income tax is concerned. Yes, sir. Okay. And then after that, they will already start paying. We treat uh, it as regular. How much is that? I have no idea how much. I'm sure graduated yan siguro. Pareho sa atin. Do you have any idea on how much uh, Brunei charges their professionals there? As of now, sir, I have no idea on how much is the rate, but we will uh, research that, sir. Pasubmit na lang sa amin how much is their, uh, yes, how much sir. are they charging or how much are they deducting yes, uh, personal income tax to professionals? Yes. Um, only after four years. Only after four years, correct? Yes, that's the. How about outside of the, these are professors, teachers, and researchers. How about those who are not? in that profession how will they okay uh, how will, uh what benefit can this treaty bring to our ofws okay. 
Okay, sir. Uh, with respect to the other professionals, if their stay in Brunei is not more than 183 mm. days, they will be exempt. Okay. Uh, so that's the general rule. Uh, that's that's. All. But if they exceed that 183 day threshold, then they will already be taxed in in Brunei. Same okay. thing here. If uh, an expatriate happens to work here for more than 183 days. That person is already taxable here. Okay, and then uh, for those profession, other professions, you no. Know? Everything, sir. All the anyone, anyone. All uh, income earners. All income earners. Okay, okay. So that's uh, clear. And then um, for companies, um, non-resident Brunei companies, meaning yeah. Filipino companies who engage. Uh, who have businesses there in Brunei, how can this treaty help them okay, or so, benefit them? Yeah. Usually, uh, under the treaty, we have this concept of permanent establishment. So okay. it's it, it's uh, defined as a fixed place of business, such as a branch or an office. So if you happen to set up an office or a branch in in the Philippines, and if you're a foreign company, then you are already taxed here. But if so, if it so happens that you only provide the services here for not more than 83 days, then we will not tax you. Let's start Mona, with Filipino companies now, because I want okay. to understand how Filipino companies can benefit. Because at the end, we want to put on record the benefits that uh, can cascade to our Filipino companies. So if I'm an architectural firm who are, who's doing business, let's say I'm building a house in Brunei, uh, how can this benefit? How can this treaty benefit me, no? As a local architectural firm. Okay, so if you don't uh, have a permanent establishment in Brunei, or if you happen to, if you are an architect and you only do the work here, and then you deliver the the design of the building, then uh, you will not be taxed there because you don't have a permanent establishment there. Okay, so I w I will pay my taxes here. Correct. Yes. Yes. That's okay. Correct. So, but I will not be taxed in Brunei anymore. Yes. Okay. So, whatever correct. tax rate that uh, is applicable in the Philippines, I will pay my tax here. That's correct. If I go beyond one hundred eighty six months, one hundred eighty three days, no. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, beyond six so months. So you will be treated as a regular taxpayer there, where you will be subjected to the regular tax rates. And how will I? I will be subjected to the tax rates in Brunei. Correct. How will I pay? Because I'm residing here, but I'm doing business there. So what is the mechanism for me to... Usually in the case of our office, the, which is the uh, tax rate relief applications, there is a... Uh, we, we require the withholding agent to withhold. So before making any payment to the non-resident, we require them to withhold. So that's the mechanism that we institute here. But in Brunei, I, I have no idea, sir. Yeah. This Dapat may idea kayo dahil you cannot come here and say you don't have any idea, no? Um, I mean, you, you, that's why we have a hearing to give but us an idea. Is, uh, but if your answer is no idea, then how can we move forward? Yeah. I know it's not, it's in Brunei, but still, yeah. no, I mean, uh, being a government agency, it's your responsibility to know everything, no? especially on this topic. You know? But usually it can be done through the withholding system because you require the withholding agent to withhold the amount before making any payment. Okay, so you require the uh, the withholding agent in Brunei to withhold the treaty. The treaty covers that. Uh, in the case of the Philippines, that's the only thing that I can answer. We we require the withhold the payer of income to withhold the the rate, which is twenty five percent now before making the payment to the non-resident. Non -resident. Yeah. Punto kasi, di, lumampas na ng 183 yeah. days, di ba? So, uh, within 183 days, I will not be taxed in Brunei. No? So, I will be paying here. No? Correct. Lumampas na ako ng 183 days. So, how will I, how will I show that I've been paying my taxes here and I will not be charged there? Because this is to avoid double taxation, diba? So my my simple question, uh, and, and and this is for an entrepreneurs, is how how does this treaty avoid the double taxation? Because the first within the 183 days, we're avoiding it. Eh. 
after the 183 days, how will this avoid that? Kasi pag winid hold ako doon and I'm paying here, then double siya. Correct? Usually, sir, uh, in the case of, uh, let's say, other countries, they require this what we call tax residence certificate. So they just present this tax residence certificate to the tax authority there. And then they... Uh, no, because we also issued we also issued that document here. So you issue here. Yes. So you issue here in the Philippines, and then I will show the tax authorities in Brunei that I've been paying my taxes here. Tama ba? Usually in Indonesia they honor it right away, so they don't they will no longer pay tax. Okay. I don't. I. I'm sorry. Masada ko masanay sa I don't know eh, and I don't care. No? Don't, don't be, don't be. Okay, yung masanay sa ganyan, no? Yeah, but in other, like Indonesia, they they honor that immediately. The tax tax resident certificate. So BIR will issue that a tax resident certificate, yes. and then the 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 the, the uh, local company can show that in. I guess they will show it to your client. And their client will show it to your tax authorities. Yes, sir. Tama, ganun ang mechanism. No? Okay. Now, if you have a branch there, for example, I'm a company here, but I have a branch there, and I'm doing business. Just a branch, huh? Yes. I'm doing business there. So how will this, this treaty help benefit the local Filipino company? Okay, so if you already have a permanent establishment in uh, Brunei or any in any other country, and if you're a Filipino company, mm -mm. then you are already taxed there because you have a permanent establishment. The relief or the incentive is only available until such time that you don't have a permanent establishment. That's the general rule for all tax treaties. Permanent establishment meaning uh, you incorporate a company there. Not necessarily, but if you, you incorporate a branch or an office, but if you happen to inco uh, form a, an, if, if there is a company there which is a subsidiary and you happen to be the parent, that will not be uh, automatically a permanent establishment because they have two distinct uh, personalities. But branch lang. I have yes, a branch, branch office there. Branch or office, yes. So I will, I can pay my taxes here, but I want, I can, how, the, how, how can this treaty benefit me? How can it, how can I be uh, not double taxed? Uh, okay, so I, as I said before, the, uh, if you ha already have a permanent establishment, then you will no longer be entitled to exemption. But if uh, under the article on discrimination, if you happen to, uh, to be, if there are, if, for, for example, if there is a tax law there that discriminates between a branch and a domestic enterprise in Brunei, then you can invoke that article on discrimination. And then um, I can, uh, again, show them that I've been paying my taxes here. Uh, what, what, kasi my branch ako doon eh, di ba? So I'm earning income there, di ba? Yes. Will I be tax based? based on my earnings there or i will declare my earnings here under the treaty sir uh, the rule for business profit is that you are only taxed on the income which is attributable to that permanent state okay payment. okay so that so anything that is not attributable to your branch there that should not be taxed that's a general principle okay but if my if i am so i will now segregate my income i will have to declare my income being earned in Brunei, and then my income, hindi ko na siya declare here in the Philippines. Tama ba? So hindi ko na papakita sa, <laughs> sa BIR na I'm earning X amount from Brunei. Uh, no, sir. Uh, what you will do actually is you declare all your, your win income outside the Philippines and your income within the Philippines. And then for those income that is taxed in, uh, outside the Philippines, then the, that will be uh, avail, you, you, you can avail of tax credit for any foreign okay. tax credit uh, tax that you pay there. Okay, I avail a tax credit here, tama? and then apply it there. Ano ba yon? All the tax that uh, all the tax forms are withholding tax forms that are issued to you, proving that you are withheld tax there. That can be used as a as a document to claim a tax credit. Okay, all right. Now, my next question is, how many 
do we have data on how many businesses are doing business in Brunei? And how many businesses have a set up, for example, they have a branch there or they don't have a branch there? How many businesses are doing business in Brunei? But we have an idea on how much, what this treaty uh, can bring in terms of peso value. Mayroon ba tayong ganun record? And we know the concept. Now, what is the reality? Aling department ma may hawak noon nung listahan ng mga Filipino companies operating overseas whether as a branch an office a warehouse a farm etc wala ba listahan ganun Don't they don't they have to declare, declare it with BIR? Because if my income is being derived in uh, Brunei, so I have to declare to the BIR where my income is being derived from, correct? And I will invoke this because I will have to show you that my income is from Brunei, but I'm paying here in the Philippines. Don't we have a record? Don't we have a record of such? Um, BIR po wala, pero we believe maybe SEC could answer that, sir. I don't know if SEC looks at all the sales of, uh, diba mayro sa GAS, sales lang eh, but hindi naman nakabreakdown dun from Brunei, from, you know, I would assume BIR will have that information. Don't they have to show companies uh, where they where the income is coming from especially in, in treaties wala bang ganun pag may treaty po makikita naman pero po pag wala pa pong treaty we have no information wala all right ikaw ano na lang best efforts if you have that no i just want to know what is the reality how much can we benefit no peso value oh if we have to put a peso value we know now the concept the concept looks okay, okay but the in, in in terms of peso value how much are we going to uh, benefit no? kung, kung best efforts lang if you have that information yeah, that's similar to uh, my question also earlier. Eh. Yung uh, transfer of technology, tapos the number of jobs that will be generated. Because, uh, of course, in uh, the debate in the chamber, necessarily will be asked what's the value. Uh, and I think we need to give a number. So what kind of jobs are you anticipating, the value of the technology and skills that are um, actually learned and so on. The uh, potential growth of the halal industry and the Muslim tourist uh, sector. Baka matulungan naman tayo ng uh, DTI, alimbawa, at saka ng tourism, kung ano yung na-anticipate nila. At pati na rin yung BIR, kasi kahit pa paano. Madam Chair, those are just my basic question. No? So, just to enlighten us how to... Uh, actually, my point is what, what benefit can this bring to us? We know the concept. And we know there are about 43 countries that have this type of uh, arrangement. But um, I don't know if uh, BAR quantified. Uh, for example, we have um, an agreement with, uh, I think, the United States, no? Yeah. United States, what else? Thailand, no? Have we quantified how much benefits uh, have, we, have we gathered from those uh, treaties? Uh, do, for example, um, how much tax, uh, double taxation have we avoided? Uh, part of this treaty is also tax evasion purposes. Eh? You know, how much have we prevented or avoided in terms of tax evasion? Meron ba tayong mga ganun na report on a per treaty basis? Just to analyze whether the treaty is uh, 
is 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 uh, effective or not mayroon ba tayong ganun na analysis um yes sir uh, for article 26 po we have exchange of information so basically it is uh, exchange of information po between the two states so for example philippines and the us so if they have a taxpayer na under investigation in the philippines or vice versa uh we request information po from them if we have a uh, po taxpayer ng Philippines na under audit na may info po si US. So we can request information from them po. And yun po isa sa mechanism namin to prevent uh, tax evasion. Parang joint audit yan. E, pero hindi value. Hinahanap namin eh yung value. Ano uh, pakinabang. They'll share information with us. That's one value. Um... I mean, tax information po, ma'am. So, the income earned po. Yun naman po yung mga nire-request namin information. Pero has it happened in the past? I mean, tax information could be very valuable if we can actually collect. Yes, ma'am. Right? So, in the past, have there been incidences in the past 43 DTAs that we have signed na menahabol overseas? na hindi nagbabayad sa Pilipinas, sa limbawa, pero tinulungan ng Pilipinas sa bandang huli, nakakolekta rin naman tayo. So may tulong yung DTA para ma-justify din namin. May nangyari na ba na kaso na tumulong yung isang bansa na may DTA ang Pilipinas at uh, dahil may joint audit nga, nabigyan tayo ng impormasyon at ultimately yung BIR natin nakapag-collect. Meron bang ganon? Uh, actually, uh, without divulging the name, the name of the taxpayer, yes, uh, um, kind of bad. Get <laughs> Yes, you were saying, uh, yeah. Director Oliban, sorry. Yeah. Kami eh. Yes, with uh, we co uh, under our exchange of information, we can uh, provide information to other tax authorities if uh, regarding the uh, inform uh, ex example income, bank uh, accounts, and so forth and so on of a particular taxpayer which has uh, some connections here so in the past we already we already assessed but right now it's under a court uh, litigation so we cannot completely say that we have collected uh, some something from it but uh in the course of uh, exchange of information yes we 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 uh, we get information particularly back information uh, because because of the tax treaty. But, Madam Chair, my, my point is uh we this is the forty fourth DTA, no? The forty fourth DTA that we're uh entering into. And uh, yeah, it's just uh I think it out of um curiosity and also of of operation. Uh, we would like to know if whether these DTAs are actually working or not. No? It's a basic question. Right? I mean, we all want to fight tax evasion. We all want to fight, avoid double taxation. But is it really working or not? No? Considering that many of these are pro forma, so we just copy it from one country to the other. Um, but, for example, in the case of Vietnam, have we? are there any... Uh, uh, are there any uh, successes no, between two countries in terms of um, uh, fighting tax evasion and also uh, avoidance of double taxation? Are there any report? I think lately uh, with Vietnam, we already have a uh, tax relief application, but only a few. Mm. But yes, there is, there's already a... Tax relief on our part, on, on their part? Uh, Tax relief application meaning to say that the Viet, uh, Vietnam taxpayer is deriving income here. 
So it applies for a tax rate relief application. Uh, okay. Yeah, so... Ang oh, alam ko, yung benefit na direct impact na nakita natin, yung mga bansa katulad ng US, uh, Italy, Spain, marami nagsasabi na kahit matagal ang proseso sa BIR, at least hindi na sila nahahassle ng dalawang beses. But to put a peso figure, I think uh, that would be the challenge. Dahil uh, narinig ko naman sa OFW na malaking pakinabang para sa kanila. Maski yung mga taga Hong Kong dati, yung mga professionals na iba't ibang remittance nagkakagulo, eh, kahit paano nakakatulong. But Madam Chair, just to... Uh... Good idea and a suggestion to the BIR to maybe come oh M and E the monitoring and evaluation to come up with an ind an individual assessment whether these uh, treaties are beneficial or not. No, uh, what benefits are we deriving as a country? Uh, uh, how much are those benefits uh, in terms of enforcement? How much? Uh, um, uh, how much are we collecting uh, because of uh, enforcement? So it's good to analyze one by one, no? Um, so that we can quantify. Hindi lang tayo pasok ng pasok sa treaty, no? Because uh, from what I gathered, because it's pro forma and you just enter into uh, the treaty. But uh, just to just to give us some uh, challenge let's analyze these treaties no one by one mga, mga, lalo na yung mga 1977 1981 dapat naman siguro meron na tayong um, evaluation kung sino na pakinabangan at uh, kung talaga nakatulong Madam Chair, let's just uh, request okay. the BR we to just submit. request this if one. you have any yeah. information. And perhaps, uh, Committee Secretary, we can also ask uh, the Department on Migrant Workers. Where's our ComSec, please? Perhaps the Department on Migrant Workers can also uh, provide a position because uh, our migrant workers are clearly very directly impacted, particularly the professionals mm -hmm. who are sometimes stuck in multiple venues. Okay, so ComSec, if you could add that as well. While uh, I'm uh, in the process of completing the record, I'd also uh, uh, urge the DOJ, uh, since we haven't heard from you, uh, Attorney Chan and State Counsel Suan, uh, are you in concurrence with uh, this DTA? What is the DOJ position? Just please put your uh, position on record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, we defer to the BIR and the DOF being the lead agency uh, in negotiating the terms of the DTA uh, here, Your Honor. Yes, the terms, but uh, in principle, you're present to uh, uh, provide your support for this effort. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Your Thank Honor. Thank you very much, uh, Chief. State Council Chan, um, what is the position also of the DFA? Uh, you're clearly negotiating this, so I assume that your concurrence is also forthcoming. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, since uh, no position was provided, I have to put it on record. BOI, is uh, that the same for your agency? Um, yes, ma'am, no reservations. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I believe that the Filipino Association in Brunei is virtually present. Uh, I was just told by our uh, mm -hmm. um, committee secretary. Asan sila? Andyan ba? Sino makausap? Pala ako nakikita kasi sa video eh. Ah, si Mr. Clifford Balwarte. Kayo po ba yung uh, nasa Brunei? Yes, hello. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Hi, good afternoon. Baka may madagdag kayo sa tinatanong ni uh, Senator Gatchalian kung mapapakinabangan ba ng Pilipino sa Brunei itong uh, bagong batas kung sakaling ma-ratify. Uh, actually, for the sake of ano lang, Madam Chair, no? kasi uh, so far okay lang naman kami dito. Uh, I'm the Vice President pala sa Filipino Association. Uh, on behalf of the Philippine position, I'm representing to this hearing. And ang masasabi ko lang, tungkol doon sa 
kung anong mabibinefit natin sa about this sa tax kasi usually madam che yung uh, business uh, ano dito sa Brunei is kailangan mo ng partnership ng local uh, local owner so parang ang nagbabayad lang ng tax is only the company hindi talaga directly uh, nagbabayad yung uh, Filipino owner so and then so ang sinasabi ninyo yung karamihan sa inyo hindi uh, gagamit nito kasi yung tax binabayaran ng kumpanya hindi ng mga trabador ah, yes, po, yun? yes po madam ano yung income tax ninyo di ba nagbabayad kayo ng income tax wala po hindi kami nagbabayad ng tax wala namang income tax sa Brunei Oh, okay. ba yun? Ah, okay. Pero sa Pilipinas? Uh, sa Pilipinas, hindi ko lang alam kasi mayroong mga... Actually, kaya nga po parang walang registered na... Parang yung sinabi ni Senator Gatsalian kanina, yung mag, mag, ang company ng Pilipinas, kung mayroon dito sa Brunei, uh, yung ko lang kung anong binabayaran ng... Ano, kasi hindi... Kailangan kasi dito, pag nag-establish ka ng company, kailangan may local partner eh. Tama. So, yung local partner ang sumasagot ng buwis. Ganun ba yun? Ah, po. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you, thank you. So, hindi mo magagamit itong bagong batas kung sakali yung partner mo na lang. Parang ganun. Ay, yes po. Yes. I see. I see. Okay. Pero I suppose, ultimately, it will redound to your benefit also kasi kahit pa paano, bawas gastos din yun sa kumpanya. Sana. <laughs> yes. Sige, thank you very much, Mr. Balwarte po. At kumusta na lang sa mga Pilipino dyan. Okay, okay. Thank you po nga. Thank you din. Thank you. So, I... At we have uh, heard from all the sectors here represented. And um, um, we will simply await the submissions uh, requested by myself and Senator Gachalian. And uh, this will proceed to... Uh, a technical working group for uh, immediately to ratification upon submission of the required documents. Is that correct? Tam tama ba yun? Diba? So, nga wala ng technical working group kasi treaty. Oo, pro forma na to. Pero you were saying kasi, Mr. Olivan, kanina, that you're, uh, you are uh, placing under review all the old DTAs and other uh, agreements. Then I was asking about the... Article 23.1 A and B regarding tax payable versus tax paid. Uh, sabi mo kanina na rini-review rin ninyo. Tama ba yun? Ma'am, um, we're currently uh, revisiting po the PH treaty model. So, ina-update na po namin po. Yeah, that being the case, perhaps you can also tell us if uh, you're going to improve the language on uh, some of these treaties given that uh, there appears to be room for confusion. Okay? Sige. Maraming salamat. So, yun lang po. Pakisubmit na lang sa lalong madaling panahon na maratify ng Senado itong batas na ito. Maraming salamat. Thank you.